in, in sub-Saharan Africa, even, even people who have energy have barely 404 kilowatt hours, right? That's what, I'm, I don't know, roughly 20 times less than um, America. So it's the same as the American fridge. So you're born into energy poverty, right? You have multiple generating sets if you actually have it. So I don't think people connect the fact that we all have to be in the room to solve this issue. It's not an issue over here. You know, climate change doesn't affect just one country, right? Yeah. And there's just, there's no world we can live with in where, you know, energy poverty can remain, but we hit our, our climate goals, right? So um, that's why gatherings like this is really, really important to have everybody in the room working to a solution. And we, you know, I say it all the time. I say, for the African continent, the energy transition is actually more energy. Do you understand that? And everyone's yeah. like, what do you mean by more energy? And like, that is what it actually means. You're not going to keep people at a pace of lack of development and hide under climate. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't work. Climate, energy, and development have to go hand in hand unless we would have failed. So, so for me, it's not about the pace. It's to recognize that they are entire sectors and billions of people, they're not even in the conversation right now because everybody is just is, is focused on one thing instead of how do you actually, you know, understand what the energy transition pathway would be. And that changes for every single country. There cannot be one size to fit all, you know, like...